Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Uh, today I got a lesson for you in the, I'll say the Jimi Hendrix uh, Little Wing vein. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about how that type of thing works. Not so much the tune itself, but uh, let me show you, uh, let me give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. So if we take something like that, there's a little bit of behind the scenes stuff that's uh, that's going on. And really, I'm to tell you the truth, I'm making that all up as I go along. So what I want to do is I want to show you how I can come up with that stuff because if you can do this and you can start to put this into practice, you'll find you can play around this stuff all day long and continue to make up new and interesting things uh, for you and anybody who wants to listen. So um, there's a couple of techniques that I need to demonstrate first because these tend to, to get people hung up a little bit. Um, the first thing is the idea of doing a hammer-on. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna do a hammer-on on the second string. And at the same time, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bar the first and the second string and I'm going to pluck them both with my third finger, do a hammer-on down onto the fifth fret. I'm on the third fret of those top two strings. So I'm gonna jump down to that second fret, or I'm sorry, second string, fifth fret, without killing the first string. And that's the tricky part right there. So when I play, I pick them both, or I pluck them both with my fingers, there's actually a lot of different ways you can do this, and it doesn't really matter. I can pluck with my fingers. I can use my pick for the second string while I use my middle finger for the first string. Or I can pluck them both. And any of those will work just fine. There's really no problem at all. So that's the first thing. And it's, it's a grace note, which means right after we pluck, we go ahead and do that. It doesn't even get a count. It's just kind of instant. And then I go back to both of them. So the whole time that high G rings out. Now I'm gonna switch my fingering around. I'm gonna put my middle finger here on the third fret of the second string. And my first finger is gonna go on the second fret of the third string. And I'm gonna do the same thing, except in this case, I'm gonna put my third finger onto the fourth fret of the third string. So I'm plucking the third and the second string, and I am, you can see I'm either plucking with pick and middle finger. I tend to do that a lot, I like it. You can do it with just like a thumb and index finger or a thumb and middle finger, or you can pluck them both. Any of those will work just fine. So if we put that together, I have the top two, and then I let go, and then I come down, so now I've got just those two, and now I've got my, my pinky at the uh, fifth fret of the fourth string. So, so far I have the little hammer on grace note on the second string, hammer on grace note on the third string. And then the, uh, the fifth fret here on the fifth string. Uh, sorry, fifth fret on the fourth string. And then I would end it up going back up to that hammer on grace note at the second and third string. So the whole thing together would be like, I'd hit the, the G or the chord, because this is based around a G chord. This is a G bar chord that I'm holding right here. So it's important to remember that all of this is based around this chord. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a minute. But that lit goes, that first hammer on grace note, release, hammer on grace note, release, fifth string, or you can play the open third, but fourth string, fifth fret, and then back to that grace note. Rhythmically, you could do it something like this. One, two, and 
something that'll fit into a measure. Okay, now if you wonder where I'm getting all of those notes from, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, if you're familiar with box two of the pentatonic scale, I have those notes constitute what, what we often call box two or what I call box two. And that box, as it turns out, goes with any major chord that has its root on the sixth string. So um, that's, that's where I'm getting all of those notes from. Uh, I, I don't really have time in this short video to get into all of that, but uh, we can, we'll save that for another time. Um, the, the next chord that I used, uh, and the main thing to remember here is that I'm basically just thinking of a chord progression, and I'm just playing the chord progression. And in this case, the chord progression was G uh, for four beats, A minor for four beats, F for two beats, C for two beats, and then back to G. Okay? And that's, of course, a chord progression you could play all day long. You know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. What I'm doing is simply embellishing it as we go. So if we uh, move up to the A minor chord here, the cool thing about minor chords with their root on the sixth string is that it's good old box one that goes with them. So we're going to do basically that same sort of idea. Um, so I'm going to play the chord, uh, I'll do a hammer on, and you don't have to do two strings, I'm doing the fifth and the fourth string, and then I'm hammering on to the seventh fret of the fifth string. So I've got that hammer on. Then I'm hitting the 3rd and 4th strings at the 5th fret, then back to the 7th fret on the 5th string, then do another one of those little hammer-on grace notes uh, using the 5th fret on the 3rd the and 4th string and hammering on to the 7th of the 4th string. So it's... So I'm, I'm going... I might end it like down here. So now I'm back down to the fourth and fifth strings. And believe me, you can vary this however you like, so don't feel like you have to play it exact. Now from there, the next chord was F. F again is a major chord, so it's going to be box two again, which is pretty handy because of that open string. So I'm actually going to do the same lick I did over the G, but because of the open string, I get to finger it a little bit differently. Now, since I've only got two beats, I can't actually do the whole lick. So I'm going to go, just kind of that last little bit of it, I'm going to do the second and third strings, and down to the F, which is at the third fret of the fourth string. So I've got one, and two, and then I'm going to go to C, and remember I was thinking about this kind of a C chord, R chord C. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically switch. The, the cool thing about this shape, it goes with box five of the of the pentatonic scale, and not many people know box five or are very comfortable with it. Um, but after box five comes box one again. So if you kind of refinger this slightly, so that instead of my third finger doing the bar, my first finger does the bar, I can do all those same licks that I did on the A minor chord. They are they are relative. So all of that stuff works again. So since I've only got two beats, it's going to be brief. It's going to be like one and two and uh, probably just something like that. So from the F, I had one and two and three and four and, and 
in that case, all I did was just a slide. So I slid from the fifth to the seventh on the fifth string, struck the third and fourth strings at the fifth fret, and then I'm back to G. And that same idea that I did at the beginning. So I'm using G chord with box two attached, A minor chord with box one attached, F chord with box two attached, C chord, which I'm switching around to get box one attached. Okay, so this, this note down here is just an E. It's not something that you find in that chord, but it's an octave away from there. So it is, uh, it is a legitimate note of that chord. Okay, so what's cool about this is you can you can really do this kind of stuff all day long. A minor, B minor, C, D. You know, you can do that same kind of idea over all these different types of chords. So this is the sort of thing where if you have any chord progression from any song that you know, you can just play with it and you can just throw all these different kinds of ideas over it. And um, that one, that rhythmically works really, really well. If I do it in a, in a box one format or box two format, it works really, really well. You can use it all over the place. So I hope this has been uh, helpful for you. This is a, a style of playing that, that I particularly like. And, um, you know, back in the, in the old days, uh, when I learned Little Wing for the first time, it was such a mystery because, you know, we didn't have the advantages of having a tab book available. And so, you know, it was one of those things where I really had to dig in and, and sort of figure out what was going on. And, and the advantage to that is if you look at sort of the approach to that and, and how you think about it and how you approach playing in that style, uh, it makes it hard to not play really close to or exactly what Hendrix played. You'll see that it just falls right under your fingers. It's, it becomes effortless. effortless. <laughs> so uh, I, hope this, uh, I hope this lesson is uh, good for you. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I will talk to you real soon.